I am a master procrastinator and uh, this build is taking far too long because what I'm going to do today has me a little bit worried. But, be what may. The hand tool build is coming together. Today I am going to uh, cut, bend, shape, wet, mess around with the sides, glue them to the back, the front, body come uh, together. The neck will be in, everything will be ready for fine sanding and finishing. And if that doesn't happen, I'm going to be in a corner crying and we'll just sort of put that on a live stream on the Crimson Guitars Extras channel or something like that. Should we get building? With hand tools. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> okay, there's not going to be a whole have a lot of talking while I do this. The plan is I'm going to cut part way through each of these pieces at the joints, at these two, bend them. They're going to match the, they're going to then be glued onto these segments here and we're going to make a frame and then that will be glued to the top and the back and everything is going to go according to plan and with ease and poison and distinction. So that's a joint. I'm probably going to end up having to put an inlay there, which is fine. But for now, I want to see how tight I can get that. That there is the outside. Yeah, that works. Let's get cutting. Now, I don't want to go all the way through. Not at all. <laughs> this is so dodgy. Okay, cranked chisel, incredibly rare. We've only had like three come through vintagetoolshop.com ever. And I uh, I kind of have kept two of them. Um, what? So the Crimson Fret Strop, which actually works very well on tools, of course. Okay, so I now need to make that deeper. Okay, so this, this is something that uh, you can't really see. I'm finding it very hard to film, but I can see that it's thinner there than it is on this side by holding it up to the light. I wish you could see that, but you can't. Haha. <laughs> so I'm just going very gently. Hold it up against the light, and then when I've got an even line, we'll see. I don't want to take it too far. I want to cut both both notches out before I start bending things and going to the final, final degree. You just can't see at all, and I can see it. It's like a line of light from the other side of the wood. Yep. Fine. And we need a smaller, smaller curve this time. 
curve angle. Speaking of the angle, you need to be at least somewhat sure that you've made a gap that's either bigger than or exactly the same, the right size you need in order to close it up to the shape that you want. And the easiest thing to do is just get a piece of paper. That's the shape we want. And if we chop that in half, if we bisect it, so here's our shape. We start with a straight piece of wood. So we're at joins. We need, <clears throat> we need to have a chamfer or a cut that matches that shape. So uh, now I suppose masking tape that back together and use that as a template. So the alternative the other, the other thing is that shape also matches there and uh, you just hold that over your thing. So uh, there you go. Two ways, the simple and the uh, slightly convoluted. And of course, well, I tend to go the slightly convoluted, don't I? So I'm having to be very careful not to cut right through with the uh, corner of the chisel. There we go. So you can see what I'm talking about. You can see all the way through the wood. That's how thin I've made it. And uh, you can also see where it's not quite as thin in other spots. Fantastic. I'm going to go with a slightly smaller, easier to handle saw. Uh, but it's also got a slightly wider cut. I wonder. I could probably use uh, groove bars and essentially put a put a feeler gauge under there and a feeler gauge under there, and then just cut till you touch it, and then you know you're there. It's safer. So we're after a pretty chunky shape here.
Okay. Okay, I've got super, super pointy uh, tip on this. So I think I can actually get in there. Okay. <laughs> um, it is at 0.4 of a millimeter, so four tenths of a millimeter uh, on that side. Yeah, three tenths of a mil. That's pretty freaking small. Nice. I just scared myself because I was sure I'd done it all four times and on this side there's nothing. But uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, get some hot water and I'm just going to syringe that into each thing and very slowly bend them. So what happens next is as you bend it, if you bend it too fast, even though it is only three or four tenths of a millimetre thick, uh, if you bend it too fast you will uh, tear the grain because you're still pulling grain apart. So boiling water essentially let that settle and relax and you know do all of that sort of stuff and then slowly bend it around the formers clamp it to the formers without gluing it and then once it's all dry it'll be in its new state and you should have some nice hard corners without obvious joints which is the only reason to do this that and to challenge oneself unnecessarily okay so it's numbered that's number one that's number two, and that's the top. So let's see. Well, let's see what happens. I'm hoping that just the weight of that piece of wood is going to slowly start pulling it down. Well, it is. You can see. Okay, that is working, but uh, I am actually going to bring out the bending iron and apply direct heat. Um, I don't want this to fail. And yes, I am fully aware that this involves electricity and is sort of cheating, but then where would the where would this build be if I did not slip up at least once, at least this time we know what's going on. So I'm uh, just using some off cuts from the sides to make little clamping calls. I think I need more coffee. There we go. Whew, this is so scary. You don't do this on corners, you do this around nice strong curves. <laughs> okay, so going from the edges, I think I've actually got this a little bit too hot. So I'm warming up the fibres on either side of the thin patch. Mm. So I've got my angle, the amount of material cut 
was correct, but I think I need to have more in the center taken away. And now that it's wet, that's actually going to be a little bit easier uh, in any case. That's looking far. Ooh, that works well. Nice. I have actually turned that down. But anyway. All right. This is a very subtle thing. <clears throat> I'm feeling what the fibers are doing and guessing and bricking it. Okay, I think I'm going to clamp. I'm going to clamp that in place. Holy crap, that was not fun. I mean, it worked. It did work, but I've got three more of those to do. <sighs> okay. Onwards. Well, that one went just a little bit easier. I, I can't tell you how stressful that was. I do have a Sigma manometer up at, up at the house. I'm going to go and check my heart rate. Okay, that is dried. Let's see what we've got. Ooh. Watch out for weight. Has it dried inside as well? Yes, we're good.
Okay, I need to make some thin strips here. It's not technically curving, but uh, it serves the same purpose. Okay, that's cured. There we go. That's warming up. Okay, so that's just chilling. That needs to dry. Every single thing about this build is taking longer than I thought it would. <sighs> I'm really happy how that's turned out. It would be more impressive on a highly figured bit of wood where you can just see the grain uh, that it's happened so clearly, but uh, still, we'll get there. Now, the biggest issue with this is uh, the potential of sanding through as I go because it's so thin there. Um, I will need to bear that in mind. Anyway, let's get this on the back, shall we? Okay, I'm going to have some trouble here. I'm going to need to clean some of that up so that I can glue the, the end block in. First of all, let's clean up these uh, sides, shall we?
I need to be very careful here trimming the end grain off and the, be the best way to do it is to actually dampen dampen the end grain a little bit and it just makes the whole thing cut easier. See the problem is my fingers in the way and I don't want to cut myself. Aha! There we go. Now doing this dry would be problematic. There we go. Sometimes abrasives are just what you need. I'm obviously going to have to cut away a section of this on, on both sides and make it a little bit shorter. But I would like, if possible, to bend the bottom section around where the, that goes. I'm starting to question my sanity. But anyway. Cool. Okay, yes. That's what we're going to do. It would be pretty cool. Cut most of that away. And then that just bends there to meet on both sides. It just completes the whole angular shape. And I've got enough room. More than enough. 28 exactly. Exactly, of course. 28, so we don't have a break angle in there, which we'll need. At the joint, which is, uh, which is there, it's going to be that depth plus the depth of the top. Um, and then it's going to go deeper here. So essentially 26 millimeters. And I'll cut this at 26 now, cut that at 26, and then it will be made deeper when I set the brake angle later. So the neck is going to go all the way up there. So essentially this piece on the outside is a continuation. It's going to hide the neck block. And uh, yeah, it should look incredible. Can't believe I'm making a guitar out of timber thin enough to cut through it with a scalpel blade. So essentially the chisel is running along the edge there. And cutting that section flush, absolutely flush. So now when my neck goes in, nice. I'm going to tidy up and clean up these sections here. Uh, just because it's inside the guitar does not mean that I don't want to keep the general shape. Uh, these were never supposed to be just square. They're, well, I'm going to chop it off and make it attractive internally.
Yes, okay, I'm going to create the bottom of the neck pocket. I am slightly worried that I'm going to have to adjust it with the shim at a later date in order to get the angle absolutely spot on, but uh, that doesn't really bother me. We've already got the sides, so I just need to make it match the back of the neck. I'm going to put this in absolutely flat. All I actually need is a very, very small break angle that I can plane into the back of the neck once all of this is together. And that, that is going to make all of this not easy, but easier. Come on then. Yeah, you don't want to watch any more sawing now, do you? Oh, dusty. I like that. That was actually quite stressful. I love sharp tools. And yes, I'm aware that a super pointy point here is probably not actually a good idea from a playability point of view. Uh, I, I might well round it over after the fact, but for now I'm, uh, I'm having fun.
Step away. Step away from this monstrosity of a successful glue up. Okay, we have got a bunch of clamps to remove. I fully expected that to have actually been glued on to proceedings permanently. That's one way to do it. <laughs> so that section of rib was actually a little bit thinner than the end of that one. Uh, I wasn't expecting to, well, I don't know. So there's a little bit of a, a lip there, but that is, uh, going to come down and meet perfectly. Very cool. This wood is so soft. It's cracking that way, so we do it from the other side. There's a point where this ceases to be intensely delicate and you can sort of uh, bang it around a bit. And uh, we're getting there. Very cross-grained block. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, a little bit more tidying up to do. Actually, I think I'm going to sand this down. With my chisel, I don't know whether I'm going too far in so that the, uh, the top won't have what it needs. And the reality is I'm still, and I'm not entirely sure if I want to put a radius on this top yet. Um, so, yeah. It's something I've wanted to do since I woke up this morning and I think this is actually a pretty good place to stop this video. A lot has happened. There is still far more than I had originally thought to do, but I can at least put the neck in the guitar for the first time. That fret is supposed to join up about that. we've got it. We've got, we've got a back to go on. <laughs> that actually looks so cool. In the next episode of this series, I'm going to have the back glued on, I'm going to have the top glued on. I'm going to, I hope, have started uh, talking about purfling and all of those final little bits and pieces, but the bit that has been scaring me, the thing that has been worrying me, has been the, has been this bit. 
putting these sides together, doing a random in the air construction, which is not, this is not the way to build a guitar, people. Seriously. This is me trying weird things that I've heard about once 20 years ago and thinking, oh, I could build a guitar without a mold. Use a mold. Use a router. Don't make a multi-piece neck pocket unless you absolutely have to. Well, I'm here to do these things so that you don't have to. Uh, watch me think, hmm, that looks unnecessarily complex, Mr. Crow. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a mold. I'm going to use a hand router. And, uh, and it's going to be easier. I, I honestly believe that I could build this guitar with traditional tools in <clears throat> three or four days, probably. Hell, less. Let's use plywood and we can do it in, 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 in or, or hardboard or something like that. And it could be done even, even easier. I am feeling very good about it. Thank you for watching. Please click like, subscribe. Don't forget that uh, uh, Great Guitar Build Off is coming to an end. The, uh, uh, the part of the competition. Oh, that feels cool. Pew! The part of the competition uh, for the public is they're coming up to their end date right now. The invitationals are about to start. I'm about to start my invitational build. I was hoping this would be finished before then, but here we go. Check out dailyguitarraffle.com. Check out dorsetguitarmuseum.com. Of course, since I started this build, I've also started like five or six other projects. And uh, for that, I am not sorry. I'm having a total blast. Catch you later.